The entire life of the Blessed Elder Siluan was prayer. He prayed continuously, changing only the manner of prayer throughout the day according to the circumstances of daily life. He had the gift of noetic mental prayer, to which he mainly dedicated the night time, which, due to its complete silence and darkness, was suitable for such prayer. The question of the forms and methods of prayer is one of the main questions of asceticism in general. The elder also considered this question very significant, and therefore, we will dwell on it in particular. Prayer is the highest form of creation, creation par excellence, and therefore its forms are infinitely diverse. However, it is possible to distinguish between its forms depending on the inner attitude and direction of the main spiritual forces of man, as testified by the fathers of the church. Prayer progresses parallel to the stages of normal development of the human spirit. The first movement of the mind is directed outward, the second is a return to oneself, and the third is an aspiration towards God through the inner person. Following this order, the Holy Fathers distinguish three forms of prayer. The first form of prayer, due to the still insufficient ability of the mind to directly ascend to pure God thinking, is characterized by imagination. The second form is characterized by reflection, thinking, while the third is deepening into contemplation. The Holy Fathers consider only the third form to be truly fruitful and correct prayer. However, considering that it is not possible for a person to attain this stage of perfect prayer at the beginning of their spiritual journey towards God, they considered the first two forms to be normal and beneficial phenomena at a certain level of spiritual development and in their own time. However, they also point out that not only can there be fruitlessness, but also severe mental illnesses if one satisfies oneself with the first form of prayer and practices it in their prayer life. As for the second form of prayer, although it surpasses the first in many respects in value, it is not sufficiently productive and does not free a person from the continuous struggle with thoughts and passions, nor does it lead them to pure contemplation. The third, most perfect form of prayer is dwelling of the mind in the heart where the one who prays from the depths of their being, with a pure mind free from all images, stands before God. In the first mode or form of prayer, a person is constantly in delusion because they live in an unreal world, in a world of imagination, if you will, in the world of poetic creation. They see everything divine and spiritual in various fantastic images, and ultimately, the entire real human life becomes intertwined with elements from the realm of fantasy. In the second form of prayer, the inner being enters the heart, and the mind remains wide open to external influences, as a result of which a person lives under the constant influence of the external environment. Without understanding objectively what is happening to them, or how all these thoughts and struggles begin within them, a person lacks the strength to properly resist the onslaught of passions. During this type of prayer, a person sometimes receives grace, and through it, they reach a good state. However, due to an improper internal attitude, they are unable to maintain this state. Having reached a certain level of religious knowledge and virtuous behavior, they become content with it, and gradually begin to indulge in intellectual theology, leading to a complex internal struggle with subtler spiritual passions, vanity and pride, while grace is gradually and unnoticed lost. Characteristic of the development of this form of prayer is the gathering of attention in the mind. This leads a person to rational, philosophical contemplations, which, like the first form of prayer, lead them into the unreal world of imagination. However, this form, characterized by generalized intellectual speculation, is less naive, less crude, and less distant from the truth than the first one. The third type of prayer, the union of the mind with the heart, is the normal spiritual state of the human spirit that every believer strives for and is granted from above. The union of the mind with the heart is experienced by every person who believes when they pray carefully from the heart. To an even greater extent, a person experiences this state when they feel the tenderness and sweet feeling of God's love. Tears of tenderness during prayer are a reliable sign that the mind has united with the heart and that true prayer is on the first step of ascending to God. Therefore, it is highly esteemed among ascetics. But in this case, when we speak of the third form of prayer, we mean something else and better. We mean the mind, which, through prayerful attention, abides in the heart. A characteristic consequence or property of this movement 
and focusing of the mind in the heart is the cessation of imagination and the liberation of the mind from all kinds of images that enter it. In this state, the mind turns completely into hearing and seeing, perceiving every thought approaching from outside before it penetrates the heart. While engaging in prayer, the mind not only prevents thoughts from penetrating the heart but also rejects and guards against them, thus preventing the action of every passion at its very inception. This matter is very deep and complex. Therefore, we limit ourselves to presenting only the main points.